Hello folks, this is Trevor Lewis again from the Voyager Steam Lab. Um, today what I'm going to show you is more of a, a video for teachers. This is a video about how to take your SolidWorks files and process them through Cura and get them into, uh, we're using a TAS 6 system, you can hear them going in the background behind me. Uh, I'm going to just show you the way I've figured out how to do this most efficiently. So to get this file into Cura, I have my students turn in the SolidWorks file so I can see everything that's going on with it. And then I have docked right here this coordinate system command. To get this command, I went up here and I searched commands. You can use this drop down menu here in SolidWorks. And you can just type in what you want. And then I just clicked and dragged that icon there to dock it there so that I always have it. When you click on the coordinate system, you can see by default the Z axis, which is blue, is not pointing up and down. Um, that's how SolidWorks does it, but then the 3D printer uses the blue as the z-axis, the z-axis as the printing axis vertically, but instead of the y-axis. So what I do is I click right here where it says z-axis to select that. Then I click on the bottom of my model. Usually that means that the blue arrow is pointing down instead of pointing up like I want it to, so I push this button right here to reverse it. Once I've got that coordinate system locked in, that'll make it easier to import into SolidWorks. It's faster than turning every, uh, sorry, importing from SolidWorks into Cura. When you get it into Cura, this will be pointing upwards now. You won't have to rotate every single one of them in Cura. So then I hit the check mark to lock in coordinate system one. And then I just go up here and choose save as because I need a D, uh, an STL file. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to choose STL. And then I need to go into options and I need to make sure that my output coordinate system is set to coordinate system one. Mine's already done this because I've already been saving these, so I only have to do this once per time I open SolidWorks. So I don't want it to say default, I want it to say coordinate system one, and as long as I have coordinate system one, it'll export that way. So I only have to set that once when I first open SolidWorks for the day. And then I have this folder here that says to print. And when I click on to print, you can see that it's on the C drive. Um, and it's it's that way it's not being backed up. Uh, my, my school district backs up everything in my downloads, documents, or desktop, and these files can be kind of large sometimes, and I, I go through a lot of them. So I just throw it on the C drive as a sort of a temporary directory. I also always use the student's name. Um, you can see that I've already printed something from this student, so it's popping up for me. But I'm going to hit save, and then it'll say, do you want to replace it? I hit yes. It says, do you want to export this? I hit yes, and it is now exported. Some Ys there on the keyboard will make that go a little faster. And then I do this through all of my SolidWorks files. If I have a whole bunch of them open, you'll notice that by doing the coordinate system, I have unsaved changes. So I usually just hit a Control S to save and a Control W to close. And once I process through a big pile of SolidWorks files, I put in my fresh SD card for my, my uh, printer and I go into Cura and then I can use Control D to clear the build plate and Control O on the keyboard to open and it automatically goes to the right spot. I open up that file. It will automatically start slicing with my correct settings. So the settings I like to use, um, we're using Push Plastics uh, PLA. So I'm, I started with the high temp uh, version. It seems to work a little bit better for me. High temp PLA. I always print at high speed because I print a lot of things for students, so I want it to go fast. Uh, I have a few things open here. Sometimes I need to dial in the temperature so the material is open. Sometimes I change the infill. Usually 20% is good, but if I'm printing a really large object, I need something uh, a little bit less dense. And then I have support open in case I need to add supports, although I don't like adding supports here. I like doing it in someplace else first. And then I have this mode right here. This mode right here is for when I print bracelets. I switch to surface mode. It'll only print the outside edge of the, of the surface. So I have that one open too. And you can see my, my usage here I have programmed in so I can see how much money I'm spending on the filament uh, for that amount. You can see how long it's going to take. I always use this drop-down menu so that it's saving directly to my SD card, and I just press save. It will tell me it's saved and exported. And then I can just do that Control-D, Control-O, and open the next one. But when I'm all done, I press eject, and then I can put it into the, into the printer. So I load up each SD card on each printer, and that way I can go through really quickly. Uh, that's all I have for you today is just a little brief window of how I prep things, the efficient way I do it, because I print several thousand prints a year. And uh, it, it really helps if I cut down those steps. Uh, 